This podcast has been days in the making. It's been a struggle. Um, yeah. But here we are. We're finally laying it down for everyone. We did it. How does our camera thing look? You look great. We're in the we're in the same room for everyone who's just listening. Rob's in my closet. I am. This is not Rob is next either. to my jackets that I was caressing that day. Yeah, he's seeing everything. It's a it's amazing. You it's I understand? Like it's there. distracting. They're nice jackets. <laughs> what's uh okay? So you got so you've been hanging out today. I mean, what's that been like? What what have you guys been up to? Rob could tell you he came. Sounds like the, you, you got he came right skinny. into the fire. He was right at like you know dinner time craziness. Well, when I got here, it was very calm. It was because it was just me and Jack all weekend. Yeah, it was very chill and cool. And Jamie had been making dinner, and she timed dinner perfectly. So right when Cutter and her other son got home, they open the door, they walk in, and boom, it's it's dinner's waiting right there. And then uh, her the son's like, "Yeah, this isn't what I want." I don't really like it. I like my stuff separate. I like my food separate. And uh, Jamie was like, this isn't a diner. I'm not making you anything else. And he's like, and then he literally said at one point, he was like, I'll eat anything but this. Like, <laughs> and then Jamie's well, what'd like, what'd you no. make? And what was the, what was the I dinner? I made fucking chili. And oh, I made the chili, chili that they love. And, and this was Bo or time, Jack? Bo. Last time, he was like, I don't really like to see the onions and I don't like to see the beans. So I was like, all right, you know what? Next time I'll just blend it all up because that's how you eat it anyway. And you won't see it. And he came in and he didn't like how it looked. And then I had already put cheese on it. So it melted in perfectly. He didn't like that. He couldn't see the cheese. He wanted to see the cheese. Yeah. Achoo. Bless you. That what a good adorable. mom you are. That too. was adorable. What a good mommy you are that he's like, I don't like the beans. Like I saw, I saw Jamie after she completed slaving over the stove. She then gets out a blender and starts spooning the chili into a blender in my head. I'm like, what is she doing? And then she blends up the chili and makes plates for the kid. And then of course, Bo's like, this looks like baby food. Mm-hmm. You know, who else, who else complained? Who else complained? Oh yeah. What, what did Cutter say? He's like, he's like, he's like, what is it? He's like, what is this? Blend it up? <laughs> I fucking. She's like, can I, you guys cut me a break? I was like, oh. yeah. I was like, can everyone just say? Can someone just say thank you and give me a break? Jesus. Oh, sorry, you sorry. You have a family. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't like the onions either. Did you guys have things like that where you were like, I don't, I didn't like yeah, but chunks they of ta- onions. Okay, but onions make things taste. Better. Oh, I get it. If I'm I just saying, did, as a kid, if I just put fucking ground meat, beef. And tomatoes and beans, it would have tasted like fucking shit. We're all on <laughs> your grind up the we're on your side. You, know? you better be. No <laughs> one well, else I'm here so was. Actually, but side. Jack was like, I'll eat it, which he never is, but he was just trying to be a dick to cut to Bo. I'll eat most things. That I, I do have a couple things that I don't like. You know, I, I don't typically like grilled onions that are kind of slimy, you know, that people put on their burgers or whatnot. I like a raw, crispy. Onion. I don't like big chunks of garlic, although I love garlic in a sauce. But big chunks of it, I I, I usually spoon around. You don't like cilantro either, right? I like cilantro. I like. Cilantro. Oh, you do like cilantro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My husband doesn't like cilantro. My grandfather would lose his mind if they put parsley on food when we went to like Italian place and or they whatever. Put lose parsley his on mind. everything. They put parsley on everything, and he would lose his oh, mind, man. cursing. What one time I was eating dinner with my grandfather, and we're like. We just started eating. And all of a sudden, like in a nice Italian restaurant, there was a plate that I guess he was done with. And he just held it up in the air. And like the like everything is going around around us. We're like eating food and we live. My grandpa's just and he didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. He just kept holding it until like somebody came over and was like, is everything OK? And was he, he was holding like, yeah, it perfectly it. straight? No, with one hand. He was, was just it, holding it like so, it, like it was like, like a bread empty? plate or like oh, whatever. Oh, and he just oh. held it up in the air and he waited until somebody and like the waiter came by and was like, hey, is everything all right? And he was like, yeah, I'm done with this. Like, <laughs> Grandpa was a legend. Uh, Cass, we can cut this out if not. But do you think we should uh, let people know what our plans are with pajama pants in this episode or? I think you should absolutely tell them. I think we only have about five episodes left if this oh is the, the plan. And and technologically, we're uh, we're on the brink of extinction with this podcast, anyway. Really, nobody. Well, well, no, I'm talking about 
us technologically. Like we couldn't get yeah. the last episode going at all. This one we're struggling. We're in a closet. It's a, don't cry, Jamie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I bet you should talk about it. And then um, we've got some like Perry Caravello news. So, uh, yeah. So I think, uh, unfortunately, we'll be wrapping up pajama pants. This is um, probably be done around Christmas. Uh, this this will be, but again, I don't think it has to be any like I, like when I stopped acting, I don't think it was a thing where it's like, all right, I'm done acting now. Like I think it's like a thing <sighs> where it's like, if we want to do, you know, if Casim wanted to pop in here and we'll do four episodes a year just because we can do that. Uh, the way I personally feel about it is, if we were all able to get into the same room, I would do this podcast every day. Like I love doing it. I love. The two of you, I'm so happy we did it, but I just personally feel that doing it over Zoom for me, it's really lost its uh, charm, I guess is the the thing. Yeah, I, I totally, yeah. I hear that. Uh, I agree. You know, I, I think initially when when we had started talking about it, I, I, I didn't care as much about the Zoom part, but I, I do agree that it is tougher to, to make a higher quality pod well when we were all in the same room we had a lot of guests we had a flow like it was just yeah. it, it was able to sort of be more than just us sort of catching up which is a, so much of pajama pants and i get it but also like you had a full-time job and i had a full-time job and there was moving and this and that and we still found a way to make it work a because we love to do this podcast, but B because no matter how many of you out there are listening, you've been so loyal to us. And so, you know, like involved with us and we love you for that. And so it's like breaks my heart to like, even whatever this is, whether it's the end or a pause or whatever, because like, I have felt such a kinship with our pajama. I've said this a million times, but like the people listening to pajama pants, I feel like they get me like they're like my people. And I just love like the little community we built. And so, you know, but it, it has been hard to sort of continue that growth that we were having in studio with, with each other. And like we said, with different guests and this and that once sort of life was happening with us. And we really, really, really tried. We really, really did. Yeah. And I think we also, you know, uh, Kasim's doing stuff now. You've got stuff going on. I've got some stuff coming up that I think, you know, it was kind of like, uh, it was, we had to make the show around two schedules, which was yours and Kasim's because I was like, Oh, I can make whatever yeah. work where if now I have something coming up and now it's going to be three people's schedules that it's just it kind of, you know, I feel like there's some weeks now where we're like, Oh, can we do, it? I can only do it this week or yeah. then it's two. And you know how I feel about it? It's like, when I get off of a FaceTime with somebody, it's like, Oh God, I miss that person. Or like, you know, where like if you ha or hang out with somebody, it's a different feeling. And that's how I felt. Like, I, I feel like when we get off of these zooms, I'm like, God, I miss doing a job. Like yeah. I miss us in the same room. I miss us doing this together where I don't like, I don't, I, again, I feel like we're sending out a zoom every week instead of sending out like a, a podcast, podcast. and like it. do it. And I think, cause it's just, you know, it's, it's, and also, you know, get, getting to do other people's podcasts when you do it in real life, like, I feel like I'm like, oh my God, this is what I want to be doing. Yeah. You know, we're like sitting in front of a Zoom, like there's no other people that I'd rather do it with. And still, it's just like, this is not, when, when we were doing the, the podcast in the studio, like anybody who I would talk to, who I felt like enjoyed podcasts, this, I'd be like, you should check us out. Like maybe I think you'll like it or blah, blah, blah. we're now like, I don't, I don't even feel the need to like. Rob's Tell, like, like, don't. Yeah, like I'm like, listen. hey, yeah, you Jamie's should come. In a closet. You should come listen. Like, we tried to do this podcast right now. We're recording on Sunday night because we tried to do it on Thursday and we couldn't. We, we couldn't. I didn't have good Wi-Fi. Kasim's microphone was broken. We tried for like an hour. Yeah, and it's just. You I know, think it's I, okay. I, feel... I think like we 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 really we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. I think for two years or over two years, I don't know how many three years now, right? Uh, we've been making a weekly podcast and we haven't yeah. skipped I, have we skipped a week or no 
I don't no, think maybe we've, we've had like a best of or whatever, you know? Yeah, but. We, yeah, there was like a first year. I think it was like a Christmas was, best of. Besides that, I don't think we've ever missed one. Nope. Yeah, and it's been, um, you know, it, it's been really like for just on a friendship basis, being able to like start a friendship with Jamie and deepen it. And now she's one of my, you know, closest friends and, and obviously being able to, you know, explore me and Rob's relationship on camera, you know, see where that goes. You know, um, I still think some of our off camera stuff is just some of the best. It's just not, it's just <laughs> well, not correct. Did, you know, you know, it's just not so it's not politically correct. Maybe there's a different pod for that, but um, it's been really great. And it's been one of the more enriching things I've been able to do outside of like yeah. whatever the, the money making part of my you know, career is, but um, I don't know. Are you allowed to tease sort of what's coming up? No, we can't really talk about it, but I, I can say that uh, we are working on something to try and, you know, bring, uh, uh, you know, people who like, pants, people. yeah, people yeah. who like to listen to us, we're going to try and do something else and, you know, try and, yeah, I don't know. We can't really talk about it now, but hopefully, uh, you know, I don't know. Follow follow Jamie on Instagram, and you'll hear yeah. about uh, what. But we're this hopefully isn't our goodbye one, right? Like we we're gonna have a proper like goodbye. But you know, we should have like our favorite guests call in for our last episode. Harry Caravello. Yeah, if it's just like we can do like a whole Perry Caravello. If that's the case, month. then bye, bye. Yeah, that's bye. why Jamie, That's why we're ending the pod, guys. Jamie's. I can't uh, talk to that asshole anymore. Um, whoa! Oh, don't Jesus. bleed that. Well, I mean, like, that's going to be a good. Nothing, uh, that's going to be a good segue. Uh, but just just to sort of put a a, a, a bow on it, uh, anyone that enjoys listening to the pod now, there will be an opportunity to sort of like find a, a new home and, and just yeah and we're not going to mail in our last few hang in there, i will i'm actually going to mail them in i'm, I'm mailing it yeah, in right we're, now we're not going to do it from anywhere worse than this guys. yeah don't, we're not going to let it go great down acoustics. what are you talking about actually the, uh, the yeah. acoustics aren't bad because there's so much shit in the room it, it exactly. actually is yeah. it's padded okay i think my room is a lot more echoey than than what you're doing there but uh yeah i think i, I also I just, I just need a background real quick i just want to say i don't want people listening to be like oh you never enjoyed doing the 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 zoom pods thanks for you know telling not telling us for a year it's like i said you know the whole time i do but like i love doing it i love hanging out with the two of you i love spending time anywhere like i love the texting you guys whatever like it's always fun but i just feel like uh you know i, I don't want it to seem like i i didn't enjoy any parts of this like no it didn't come across that okay way. yeah i just i love you have a you have a you have a um an expectation of what you wanted to put out there. And it's just been difficult to do that with circumstances. It's nothing to do with the podcast or us or our audience or anything. Like, again, we would have, we would continue doing this for years if there was five people listening, you know, we happen to have 11 listening, but <laughs> you know, we'd still do it, but it's just, it's just been hard to, but you never know. You never know what the future holds. You Maybe we'll get know. cast to move here too. All I, all like, I got to do is hop on a short plane and, and um, like know, twice a month and we'll bang them out. Like a short bus, but it's a short plane. I got to get on a short it's plane. Called Southwest. It's a little yellow plane. Spirit it's called Airlines. Southwest. Um, yeah. I, I, know, the short can I plane, ask babe? a question? Please. So. Hey, today, one of today's sponsors is also BetterHelp. Guys, you guys know yes. we're big fans of talk therapy. And one of the biggest issues for me before I was a regular therapy goer was like, how do I get started? Well, who do I call? Who do I know that does therapy? And then do they like that person? Can they refer me? Can that person fit me in? Um, I'm so glad today with companies like BetterHelp, you can download an app. Um Put all your information in and be matched with a licensed therapist within 48 hours. You have access to them um, to write them all week and they will respond. And um, you can uh, essentially do it at a fraction of the cost of what traditional talk therapy was. If you've always thought about talking to someone but didn't know how, BetterHelp is for you. 
That's right. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online, plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist, and if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash pajama. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Yama. But John, uh, BetterHelp has been the uh, ad that's come back the most to us yeah. and which makes us really happy because we're all big proponents of therapy and it means our listeners are using it and enjoying it and we appreciate that. Yeah. You know, I have fallen off the wagon of my athletic greens and I feel it. Like I feel the difference. I don't feel as good in the mornings. I, it actually makes me feel like really alert. It makes me really regular. Um, I really miss taking my AG1 because look, I don't have time to take a bunch of supplements. I don't have time to like keep track of all this stuff. So now I have this one scoop of AG1 with water and I am absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help me start my day right. Like I said, it makes me feel alert. It makes me feel alive. It tastes great. And I really miss it. I'm really feeling a difference these past couple of weeks that I've fallen off the wagon and I can't wait to get back on. Yeah, I'm at Jamie's house. When I got here, I went in the pantry to pig out on a bunch of food, and there's AG1 all over the place. Mm, yep, And it's not right. just the ones that they've sent us. You've been buying it on your own. I right? sure have. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash pajama. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash pajama to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. You, you know, the short can I plan, ask Deb? a question? Please. So, you know, I feel like, you know, when you tweet at people, I think it's like so lame. Well, you know, when people are like, hail, hey, Delta, like, thanks oh, yeah. for the delay again. I've never, I've you know, never, I, I've seen it work And people will like though. screenshot and show like, oh, look, Delta wrote right. me and making it better. Like, I would never do that. However. But. <laughs> and I'm only saying this because Becca encouraged me because she talked about it on her podcast for me. So I fly Southwest a lot, like two, two to three times a week, sometimes four because of back and forth to Albuquerque. And I'm not knocking the airline, but I am because, you know, it's like, it's like this fuck, you know, cause you don't have seats. It's like, people think like they got a rush to get on and like people didn't want to pay for the extra, but they're mad that the people that did that are in the front of the line. Well, and explain people- it because Southwest doesn't have like, it's just kind of first come first serve, right? So Southwest, you have no seats, but yeah. depending on when you check in for your flight, your A, B or C, your groups. And you have to literally line up in numerical order of where you <laughs> fell in to get on the plane. It's designed However, to give you anxiety. It's like the worst. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's the fucking worst. And most likely everyone on your plane has two to three more flights after the one that you're on. Cause <laughs> everyone takes Southwest to connect to places. Yeah. I happen to be able to have one of the direct ones between Austin and Albuquerque, but get this also, by the way, it's also supposed to be a cheaper airline, but because I only fly one leg of it, they charge me like 500 bucks for one way, which is bullshit aside the point. So because of me going back and forth a lot and through airports, I put sometimes like wheelchair assistance, though I very rarely use the wheelchair assistance, but I like to do pre-board because it just like, there's no stress of it. I don't have people like pa- like walking behind me as I'm trying to walk with my suitcase. And like, I have t- time to like get on the plane, get my stuff on, whatever. There's no way to like sign up for that and say you you need just like extra time or whatever, you have to put wheelchair assistance. It's the only option they give you. We've tried calling the airline, whatever. Every day that I get to the fucking check-in or the gate person, and again, this is two to three times a week, they give me shit because I don't look like I have anything wrong or I don't like, how bad is it if you were able to walk to the gate? And mind what you, what if we get you a little shirt? 
It says something's wrong. <laughs> Which with already it. pisses me do you, off. Do you, and you ever then turn I it people, on a little bit? Like, up, by the way, I don't have MS? to. I like clearly walk with like a limp. Like yeah. I don't have to. Yeah. But like, but then also there's like people when they're like people for pre board, and when like I get there finally after arguing with the gate person every fucking day about like to give me a pre board. There's a guy that's like, this is for pre board only, and I was like, yeah, I know I am. He's like, why? And I like took off Ugh. my mask. I was like, because wow. I have MS, bro. It's like, he's like, no, yes. you don't. I was like, what? are you kidding me? <laughs> Every fucking week, I am given an issue because of my disability because I don't look like I should have a disability. Because and I'm you're so thin. Off. You're so thin and hot that it's, they're upset. You know what I mean? Well, you say you walk with a limp. What if we, what if we dress you like, like, uh, we give you like a bandana and we make you kind of look like a thug. Hey, I and look you like shit at limb. the airport. I'm not like cute with like cute airport outfits. I'm like this right now you with a mask. You know what I think you got to do the same way? They, and I know it's a lot easier said than done, but the same way that people are like, oh, you know, I, I, I you know, when you say like, if you say on Twitter or Instagram, like I donated money to this charity, people would be like, how, 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 why do you have to say, or like, you know, they'll find something bad about anything. Like, when some guy is like, why do you need, like, I wish you could see me in this reverse situation. Like, I would look at this dude and either, like, lose my mind or just be like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, who, are, like, you're questioning me? Who are you? Like, you know, but I understand yes. the frustration of you having to. And I stress like, every day I can't when I imagine. go to the airport, I'm like, here we go again. And the gate last week, the gate person was like, you know, oh, gate. Because she's like, do you need a wheelchair? Let's go after every a, group. Do you need a wheelchair when you go to Austin? And I'm like, no, I'll be okay. Just pre-board. She's like, well, then don't mark it. You're wasting people's time. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, oh, is somebody waiting in Austin already with, for me with a fucking wheelchair? No, they're not. This is terrible, dude. This is absolutely appalling like, behavior. And so Southwest, just please just give an option. Or like, you want me to fill out a medical questionnaire? You want my doctor to sign a note? I'll do anything to not have to deal with this every week, multiple times a week. And I can't fly another airline because American cancels their flights all the time or delays them. And they only have one direct a day that's like at very inopportune times. Shout out to Southwest for never canceling. Yeah, shout, shout out. <laughs> Um, Shut up. Would you? Okay. I'm really sorry for this. this no, no. I this just, is what this we is, need. This is, we need a little I'm, passion, I'm thinking about, a little fire. I'm thinking about, I need it to get it out. Keep, forget the guys. Forget the announcement we made. Because it's going to keep going. That's, that's fair. Your your outrage is warranted. Would you do this? Or do you have... Um, is it a, a, a sort of like... Would you walk around with crutches? No, because that's going to be hard for me. I have my suitcase. Maybe I really, we can, can get we somebody this? from Southwest on. I think oh, you man. need I the wonder if, uh, Does anyone work for Southwest? I wonder if Josh, does Josh, you think jo Josh has had a lot of jobs. Is jo that, Josh, is, his name, right? Josh sits yeah. on top of the Southwest terminal and takes a photo. And uh, Oh, he is a soon-to-be pilot, possibly. <laughs> yeah, we got to get Josh in that. I just think if you had some crutches Whatever. and you were sort of just like dragging your feet, you, if you had the palsy crutches and you were dragging your feet to the desk, no one would say anything. And the, you know and, what you gotta do? You gotta dress like Oliver too, you know, with the raggedy stuff. Like, you know that? You guys, like, I'm, gonna put a go, I'm gonna put a GoPro yeah. with me the next time I go to the airport so you yeah. see what I deal with. You're like a cop. You should have one of the, it should be voice activated. Dude, on you should. Chat. So there's a certain, if, 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 if it hears the word disability, it turns on, you know? Someone's like, you don't have a disability. It's like, Psh. And it opens up and starts recording. <laughs> um, this is this is interesting, and it ties into something that happened to me uh, on Friday. I think that if you were sort of like going live on Instagram or something, you could kind of turn this into a big nationwide news story. Celebrity with MS treated badly by Southwest. <laughs> You'd never have to pay for another flight. Um, I, I, yeah, see, I won't do that. I can do it here in our safe confines of our 11 people that are listening to pajama pants, but I will not do that. If we had more listeners, I would be in trouble so much. Oh, look at our listeners. They send us their dating profiles. They have abs. <laughs> Give me a, bro. We're fine. Yeah. Yeah. He also, by the way, did send us updated photos. I looked at it. It's, he did a good job. G great quotes. I say, Josh, you definitely upped, uh, upped it with this okay. last this last round. Um, can I, can I tell you guys some... something that happened to me? Yeah. Or Please. should I show you? Because I uh, I did a live stream from Venice. I want to watch it. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, let me see if I can cue this up here. One Our boy's more. a streamer Still now. That's why. Up. Tell uh, him you're, you're streaming on, uh, on Twitch yeah, every day. Yeah, you know what? Right? I, do Four see, days a week. I do see some pajama pants uh, listeners in the crowd. Oh, cool. Uh, when I'm chatting. And uh, give me just one minute here. Yeah, when I was at the, uh, the poker place the other day, I was walking out of the bathroom and the guy walking in the bathroom was like, love the podcast. <gasps> oh, and I was cool. like, oh, yeah, thanks, man. Like, and yeah. I saw him again and I was like, hey, what's up? And I think he was weirded out that I remembered him. So I, I was, uh, I moved, I moved recently to Austin and Helix had sent me a mattress to Los Angeles and I had it at Kasim's place. Kasim was a good friend. He sent my Helix over to, uh, my apartment and it arrives the same way it arrived that helix sends it to you it arrives in a box on your doorstep i brought it inside into my bedroom i opened it up uh it unraveled in like an hour full size been sleeping on it for about a month now it's amazing very comfortable what was the model what was your what was your so you know you guys you uh, can take a, a quiz midnight. you take a helix sleep quiz and you get mm-hmm. matched with the model mattress that is specifically made for you so whether that be soft medium firm you if you sleep on your side back or stomach you move around all night so it really makes it specific to your sleep style yeah, yeah i took the test it gave me exactly what i need it's perfect and uh yeah very happy with helix yeah that's right you- i have a my own is a, the sunset lux is what i have and i mm, uh, really enjoy sexual. it and if you guys sign up take the quiz like jamie said figure out which mattress is right for you um and helix is offering 200 dollars off all mattresses orders and uh two free pillows for our listeners so go to helix sleep.com slash pajama with helix better sleep starts now Okay, this this video, this clip, I was out on the boardwalk for three and a half hours on Friday. This clip from it has eighty, almost eighty thousand views. <gasps> uh, since that's Friday. more views than we've ever had in all in our it? history of in, in two days. Uh, in two days. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can share this with you guys here. One How have you not see, you haven't seen this Jamie on his oh, social media it? or anything? No, no, no. I'm oh. just saying I figured through social no, media you guys are it. like Did you post it? Uh I posted it on um TikTok. Oh, I don't do TikTok. TikTok. What do the pajama pants uh listeners say when they Oh, uh, they, they say like out? uh uh panties uh PJ panties crew. They say <laughs> stuff like this. Oh, by the way, I saw guys, I saw Jamie's uh toe today. She she's like, You gotta see this and showed me the, the healing legit, toe. It's a legit cut. Yeah, it was higher up than I thought too. It's really right in the middle of that big toe. I told you I know, but I just for some reason I th- I just thought it would be closer to like the actual foot where it's really like it's like no, halfway between nail and okay. Um what a warrior. Show them that when you're pre boarding. Oh yeah. I should just walk around with a picture of my toe around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how can we stop this pod? The, the dumbest things ever said. <laughs> I should walk around with a picture of my toe around my neck. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's the only times, way I can prove it. How often does that been said? It's so good. Yeah, so I was, I was, I have this what's called an IRL backpack. And so certain streamers, they, they've figured out a way to put everything that you need in a backpack and you hold this camera and you can live stream on Twitch on the go. No, no need to be at home. Um, so my friend had one and, um, I had this like goal. If we hit the certain goal, we'd go to the beach and, and just film walking around and interacting with people. So uh, that's what we did. And towards the end of the day, we had a real nice time. As we had a uh, like four of us out there, we're laughing, having a good time. We had sat down for lunch, and then right as we're sort of coming back, um, this happens. Okay, and okay. Uh, and and involves the most famous uh, street performer in Venice Beach. If I were oh. going to tell you tell you who that, like, if I was going to ask you who the most famous Venice Beach performer was, who would you guess? I would guess he's an amputee. <laughs> do you, who, Jamie, who who would you guess? I don't anymore? have a guess. Okay, do you know the rollerblading guitar guy? That guy that's no. always in. He's in. Okay, so he's in. Every, he's no. in like all these movies. He was in a Pepsi commercial. He's like he just screws around on rollerblades and he plays guitar and he has like a turban and uh, he's okay. and and that's his thing. Okay, so Everyone's okay. that's enough. that's the setup. This is what happens um, when uh, I catch him sort of walking towards me. Hey. 
one of the most famous, iconic Venice Beach personalities, yeah. guitar guy. Oh. Yeah. Uh, all, right. all right, I gotta tip him. I gotta tip him. Hold camera. All right, brother. Put that back in your pocket. Okay. And pull out thirty dollars. Oh, yeah, I only yeah. have this much. Yes. I only have this much. Use your card. Use your card. Your I don't it's want a so shirt. Good. Can I just give you the cash? No, you can donate thirty dollars. <laughs> well, dude, I don't want to give you thirty dollars. I just okay. want to give you the dollar bill. Don't you want like ten dollars? Are there some homeless people up the street? Yeah. Well, it's that. well, it's just for playing the guitar. That went terrible. I don't know. Part of me is like good for him. But then, how did you feel about that? I was really put off by the interaction, and and this is, and I've had. Is he insulted because uh, he's not homeless? He's not home. Okay, so he's not homeless, but I also didn't think I was treating him like a home. I was treating him like a street performer, which is you you perform and I'll I'll give right, you money. Right, right, right. But I think based on what he said to me, which was at the end, he was like, "I think there's some homeless up there. You can give that ten dollars to." You know, like it was like, "Oh, maybe he." has this sort of thing. He actually, from what I understand, he owns like a home. Uh, he makes a really good living. He's He's been doing that for, I don't know, 30 fucking years. The guy's up and down that thing, apparently and charging $30. he's a terrible $30. guitar player. Well, well he's, he's, he's got... He's a shredder. He's the, got the distortion turned up. It's not necessarily the, the great... I, he honestly was doing it for three seconds. He gave me a three-second riff. And I was like, oh, let me just tip him six bucks. And then yeah, he was like, put it back. Then I pulled out like 10 bucks. I gave him 10 whole dollars where I wanted to. And he, Did he and know he was being filmed? I Well, I had the camera. I think so. Yeah. I mean. Uh, so he was doing it for the camera. Doing what mm, for the camera? I think he would have taken that 10 Acting bucks. up for the camera. You think he was acting mm. up, huh? Do you think that's good for his brand? Because the guy's on, no. he's online. I mean, he's got a Facebook. He's got the, all this stuff. Does he twitch? Does he twitch? Oh, he twitches. All right. So um, I he felt a twitcher? I felt weird. I felt like um, I don't yeah. think I did anything wrong, but like you the guy it. made me feel he made me he like embarrassed oh me. And uh, yeah, Cass, listen, I hey, love was you your for how sensitive. The people there? No, that was Fiona. Uh, okay. My friend Fiona Case and Ovali were there with me. Cass, I love you how f for, for how sensitive you are and you're a great guy. But the, the, you're pushing it now. With the, I, sure. I, I feel bad for offering a street performer ten dollars. What, what's next? Jesus Christ! I, I, I don't. You got to stop. Let me clear. Let me clear that up. I don't feel bad. I don't. No. I didn't like the interaction, and that made me feel bad. But I did. I didn't I do anything have liked wrong. It either. I, it I was like an awkward. It, it was an awkward thing. I was made to feel like I wasn't. Uh, being a, a good person or something, you know, but, uh, yeah. anyways, you know, that caused quite a bit of a uh, conversation online and, um, you know, that's, that's, that was just happened. That just what happened are people Friday. Saying? You should have told them, Hey, you know, I let someone take my bike. Well, it's, it's created a, a conversation around like, you know, I, I'd, I'd say 85, 90% of the people agree with me and, and think what I did was okay. And then there's some people that are like, you should have. You're a millionaire. You should have just give. You should have just gave the guy the thirty dollars. Like I'm, I was like, those people can suck my dick. Sure. So let them. Those ten percent of the people. Could have what a fucking asshole! That you're a millionaire. So you should have. You didn't offer that person walking by for three seconds the right amount of money. Oh my god! Look, I'm you, with you, you, dude. I didn't mean to stick this up. Oh, you you're offered him more now. than let minimum him, wage. Let him have and it. Someone's Robbie. like, hey, that's not enough, people. But by the way, right. that's what this is. What those people want? They just want a reaction. They don't really even fucking feel that way. They just they're trolling. They got me. You got me upset for three seconds, and now I move on with my life. And you continue to be a troll for the rest of years. Yeah, I thought it was fine. I'm just. I, I tell you what, if I, I I'm probably going to go down there again at some point and I'll probably live stream again. If I see him, and then I'll um I'm going to buy a shirt, but I will I will do it by addressing the uh, you showed him the, the prior incident. Yeah, uh, maybe what I'll buy shirt a shirt say? and then I'll just go throw it in the trash. Right yeah, that's good. No, what does the shirt say? I don't know what it says. I didn't even... Pick up your dog's poo poo with it. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, That's good. you're on fire today, good. Jamie. Yeah, you're on. What'd you guys have for dinner? Did you give her chili? Wow, blended up chili. Yeah, you were <laughs> sweet potatoes with yeah. some roasted sweet potatoes. Chili smoothie. In there. 
Um, it sounds good. It sounds. I made really him drink good. it through his straw. Good. Yeah. Very yeti. Jamie was like, "It's good. It'll go in and come out looking exactly the same." Exactly. She um, said that to Bo while he was eating it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Savage. Uh, I have an email, uh, and and the title Santa debate. Uh, remember how oh, I talked about yeah. Santa the other? You, yeah. you want me to read this? Yes, yeah. but also we have to get to the Perry Caravello thing, right? Or did we? Oh, okay. Yeah. So did you already see it, Jamie? The Perry Caravello. The Twitter clip. Yeah, uh, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna rewatch it because I I watched half of it. So many open invites for everyone but me. You piece of shit. Fuck off and fuck you. Jamie, Jamie, it's about time you come on the stream. Thank you, thank you for coming on. You are, you know you personally know you are always 110 percent invited here, always. But you're also playing games with me, so uh, sometimes I don't even know if it's the truth. Because when I talk to you in person, it's like you pretend that you don't even want to come over here. I got you on the phone. I got Rob on the phone. But you know that I want to have you here. Cass on the phone. You, Rob, and Cass, you know, uh, they know you want me. They know I want you. So stop playing games with me, uh, sweetheart. Time for the game to be over, Yeah, he was. (laughs) Come back Let from Wyoming ask. and let's have some fun. Come back from Wyoming, uh, Jamie. Jamie, have what? you ever been to Wyoming? Never. Who, did so did so? some? Did one of his listeners write in and then like it was like Jamie that wasn't read, you like messaged, a robot? You messaged him. You said fuck wait, off, you any, piece of shit. Right. And then he for still people I just am, hold on, am, hold on, hold on. Most important. I was thing. probably busy arguing with a Southwest agent or right. making chili. For I don't people, have time. To, yeah, you're stiff arming a fat person. For people who don't, who are not watching. So what happened was Perry Caravello is doing his live stream and people can donate and something pops up and Jamie wrote in and was like, Hey baby. And it was like from Jamie Lynn Sigler. And it was like, I forget exactly what, what was it Cass? What did she write in? Uh, it said, um, wow. So many open invites for everyone, but me, you piece of shit, fuck off and fuck (laughs) you. Which was and pretty. Like, oh, str- that's Jamie. a pretty strong statement. Yeah. Yeah. So what I happens love is, whoever was impersonating me. That's so good. <laughs> so what happens is people, uh, like he'll he'll you know he'll say he'll invite these women over, who are donating, and I guess he didn't he didn't bring you up. So you, I don't know. I, I listen. I I very rarely question you. I always feel like you tell me the truth. I think there's a ten percent chance it was really you. Yeah. I think there's more than that yeah. because, like, you've shown you've if shown you your ability find, this if pod you to be see kind of me mean. Watching Perry Caravello's live stream and trying to correspond with him, you need to come over immediately and check my pulse. Well, you were in Wyoming, okay. or I would have. What is Wyoming, Jamie? It's I w- so crazy, Wyoming? Perry. If you're watching this, this is this is an act. And like, I'm sorry that she can't be her authentic self. We know she wants you. She knows she She's wants married. you. She wants to come over, have fun. But she is married and she can't like, per, like reveal her sort of true self. On this the is the real reason why pajama p- pants is ending, you guys. She has to go to Wyoming because there's that whole thing like, oh, if it's a different zip code, it's not anymore. cheating. So she goes to Wyoming. She creates an account. Yeah. I'm she gonna writes play with Perry. my jackets. <laughs> Listen, oh, dude, Doug, get her away from the jackets, Rob. Jamie, I know your type. You dated professional athletes, and that's why you love Perry Carvello. He's a professional snowboarder, snowboarder. skateboarder, comedian, actor. Yeah. What and does if, his tattoo say? Well, that. exactly that. <laughs> and you wouldn't get something tattooed on you <laughs> that wasn't real. So, yeah, and it's on a scroll. It's on a scroll on his arm. It says professional <laughs> snowboarder. <laughs> and he went snowboarding uh-huh. twice. Uh, I don't okay. know why I that's so funny, hate. but I don't, it's I don't amazing. know. It's amazing. That's so funny. The guy has I, passions and all right, people read the email. passions. Yeah, I know people hate talking about Perry Soul Stop, but man, oh, it's just. You know, this pod is going to have it all by the time we're done with it. This is from Tina. She says, uh, this is subject Santa debate. We talked about you uh, giving the news to Bo that Santa wasn't real a couple pods ago. And now Bo's got to lie to his little brother for the next seven years. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rob, Jamie, and Cass. Huge fan since I discovered your pod during the pandemic. She put me first, so she's on my side. Uh, lost 50 pounds walking and listening, so thank you, Rob. Wow. You, you once called yourself a curmudgeon, and I have to say, spot on. In this day and age where little kids are See, forced to grow up things. fast, what is wrong with keeping them young and innocent? I wish I had something that wonderful to believe in. It's not a lie. It's just a wonderful chance for kids to believe in something magical. Jamie Cass, talk some sense into this man. 
Love the pod. Obsessed with Sopranos and Cass. Never knew you prior. However, you're pretty freaking awesome. Funny AF. Jamie, I wish you, I wish when my son was small, I had your parenting skills. You're a fantastic mom. Never doubt yourself. One more thing. As a recovering alcoholic myself, Rob, you are an inspiration. Your dedication is extremely impressive. I could cite at least 10 things off the bat that I have learned from you and applied. So thank you. I know this won't be read on air. However, I hope I hope you get to read this and understand how I value your pod. Shout out to Gabby as a Filipino sister. Continue success and much love and respect. Tina from Long Island, no connection or relation to Phil from Long Island. Thanks, My Tina. Long Island girl. I was about to say you're never going to keep that weight off, but then she buttered me up and said a bunch of nice things. So I'll, I'm not going to say that. But I was going to say, say it that? because she fucking went against me with the whole bow debate. And here's the thing. Listen, right. you want to believe in you want to believe we in weren't magic. against each other. I no, no, no. I would she have left for him to believe. More, she was like, talk some sense into that curmudgeon. Oh, that's so, what she said. She said, talk some sense into me. But here's the thing. We live on this planet. There's enough magical, amazing shit. Go go take your kid to see the fucking northern lights. Look at what Cass has behind him. That's a fucking UFO. There's a whole bunch. Listen, I don't know if UFOs exist. We could say t- I know Santa doesn't. You know what I mean? There's so much magical stuff. Take the kid to go see a fucking magician. There's magic. There's magic that you can go say. You don't have to lie to him about Santa until he's nine to get your kid to believe in magic. There's other ways. Do you think, Jamie, that um, How about those shrimp, those preach, shrimp? Preach. What's the thing with the shrimp? You put the water in the shrimp and they're alive. What's that thing? You know, those- oh, the uh, little uh, fucking sea and sea buddies. What are they called? <laughs> Yeah, sea urchin. The the sea. What are they called? Sea. The little shrimp. They come in a package yeah. of the water, and all of a sudden they're alive. Magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sea buddies. What? Uh, sea something. Sea monkeys. Sea monkeys. Yeah, sea monkeys. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah, see. So, so your kids is magic of the earth. Jamie, let me ask you this: sort of like if you were going to counterpoint Rob, there. Do you think that the kid's ability to believe in stuff ser- serves them when they? grow up and get older to have maybe like more of a sense of wonderment or is it like do you feel like giving them those facts is a better i think it's i think it's i think those feelings of wonderment build a like neuro pathway that as an adult you may let go of like the magic but i think it transfers to like hope when you need it in things I like that. It's like that a, was beautiful. That was but I, but fucking d- and you beautiful. don't think that can be done with facts, like with real stuff. Like no, if you took real Bo, facts, if you can't took Bo out, you hope if you things. took Bo out with a telescope and you showed him fucking Pluto and told him all about, oh, it's this far away, and we figured out how to look. Like there's so much wonderment and wow, it's so amazing. Sure. And then, instead of being like, hey, there's this fat guy who climbs into the chimney and he's a billion years old and. You never die. It just adds excitement about things. And the excitement over Christmas, even when you know Santa's not real, still exists. But if if a guy if a guy wants to fucking tell a chick for a year, like, oh, you're the most beautiful girl in the world, I love you, and I would never do anything else, but then he's fucking banging uh, other chicks on the side and doing whatever he wants. Is it like, yeah, but that year was great. She thought she was the only chick and is it it's like no, he was fucking lying. But I'm saying this is how I see it. Do you, this is how I, do you think kids I don't think who so. believe in Santa have a better upbringing than kids who don't believe in Santa? I think my childhood would have been a lot more fun if I got to believe in Santa. You you, d- didn't? you didn't get to believe? We were Jewish. Like there was no Santa in our lives. What well, other the replacement? He didn't come to Jewish kids and then Jerry my parents Dreidel? were like he's not real. <laughs> Menorah <Okay>. Matt. <laughs> Hanukkah Harry. <laughs> yes. Uh, Pick your favorite Hanukkah character, guys. Jesus. Wow. I didn't know that you were deprived like that. My I, parents I actually did Middle it for Eastern my brothers. We did, we my, did Christmas. My parents did it for my brothers a little bit. And then like by the time I was born, they were so over it. Wow. I think there's something to when you are treated with that like excitement around Christmas. And then when you're old enough to have kids, you want to like give that excitement to yeah. them. And, and in turn, I think they have a a more loving, more, um, I don't know, more fun 
It's a more of an attachment to the holiday and the time. But by the way, Bo is just as excited now that he is going to get to be in on it for Jack. Like, I think I told you, like, a bunch of yeah, presents came for Jack. And he, <laughs> he gets yeah. to oh, lie. He can't wait to lie brother. this year. Mommy's encouraging his lie. Next year, you could lie with us. No, your brother's old enough. He could lie with us, too. Hey, listen to this, Who's Bo. Jack gonna the lie whole to? Man, family his, lies. His, his teenage years are going to suck. <gasps> He's going to have no one to lie to. <laughs> this is family sanctioned lying. I wish lying. I still smoked weed. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you're in full retirement. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. It's been two weeks, Jamie. Yeah. How long has it been, Jamie? <laughs> two days. <laughs> I wish I still smoked weed. Jeez. <laughs> you're so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I wish you had a picture of your toe around your neck. I That's know. what I'm gonna get you for Christmas. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna get you a, a bling, a blinged out Give me an ornament, so I'll never forget. I okay. put it up every year. But you want to get a pedicure before and send me the picture of your toe? Yeah. Okay. You don't want my toes. My feet are rough right now. <laughs> oh man. So how how's streaming going, babe? You know, it's been it's been good. It we have a um, a 24 hour event that I'm in the middle of producing. That's uh, it's gonna start next Sunday, Sunday the twentieth at ten a.m. and end Monday at ten a.m. And Jamie's excited. I know. I I I know you guys are gonna tune in. Um, Hell yeah! Though. And uh, we're gonna have like I'm gonna have every so it's essentially like everyone that was laid off on our team on Attack of the Show. I'm trying <laughs> to have over to like do whatever because everyone's kind of doing their own creative projects and so like. They can come and share that with cool. the audience. And there's um there'll be a green screen. We can do wacky stuff. There's just like, you know, cameras all over the house so we can walk around and do all kinds of things. But it'll be a good sort of uh catharsis for everyone that was laid off to kind of come together and have an excuse to hang out and then, you know, have the audience that was kind of left high and dry have something to tune into. That's been really nice. And I'm I was just pulling up an email for somebody that was like who's been listening to us G4 and now carrying on to Twitch. Um, it's been nice. The, the amount of support that we've gotten post being laid off. Sure. And it's almost been like, it's crazy. We're like our streams do better numbers than what like the G4 uh, streams would get. So it's been, um, it's good. So we have a 24 hour stream happening Sunday, the 20th. So if you're watching or listening to this and it's, close or within that 24 hour window tune into my twitch channel we got all kinds of fun stuff planned oh yeah and can you so since i've been there there's a new that's a new addition to the background right what is that guy with the gun cyber something yeah it's a cyberpunk it's a signed uh cyberpunk metal foil tin who Which signed is, it who's cyberpunk the cyberpunk's a video game that came out a couple of years ago and it's signed by the developers the people who uh Two of the guys who work on mm. CD Projekt Red. Right? I know you guys think that's really cool. When I get that mm, from Jamie. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so if uh, here's mm. a question. If mm. you have a picture, let's say you have a video, like your favorite video game of all time, uh -huh. and, and you have the, the case of it, uh -huh. and you could have one person sign it, who do you want signing it? The developer. <sighs> Like, are you so? What are my options? Like, the guy who voices the Every, character, everyone, in the game? In, everyone in the world. You got your favorite, you got a game in your hand, whichever one you want, and you could get anybody. Like, who's the right. ultimate sign? Well, for this game specifically, like from this podcast, it would be Gabby, or for the it would be Gabby for, for Cyberpunk, it would probably be this guy, Mike Pondsmith, who's the one who wrote this game is based on a uh TTRPG, a tabletop role playing game like Dungeons and Dragons from mm. uh like a couple 30 years ago um and so he they turned that all the lore that he wrote for those games into a video game so this one guy sort of the singular vision of this and so he would probably his name's mike pondsmith he'd probably be the one i'd get the uh autograph for listen i don't want to shit on anyone who does dungeons and dragons i don't know enough about it i don't get it i'm sure it's great there is a guy on a reality show I watch, which already, like, I watch reality shows. Who cares about my opinion? But there's a guy on the show who does Dungeons and Dragons, and he did it on the show for, like, one segment. Yeah. And it's super, it's, it I can be hated, very cringy. Yeah. I hated it so much. And the reason why I hated yeah. it, something that bothers me more than, like, many, like, it's in, like, my top 1% of things that bother me. Is when somebody's me and Cass talk about this sometimes. Is when somebody's being ridiculous, 
but then they constantly talk about how ridiculous they are. I hate, or when someone like says me and then they're like, God, I'm so random. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah, and you're so like, so quirky. Random? Yeah, they're like, well, we're so like, or you like two people like constantly on dating shows, you see girls and like they, a guy and a girl say something and they're like, man, we're so, we're yeah, like, so Kasim, crazy. like, we're so quirky or like, man, if people heard us and like what they're saying is right. not crazy, but this guy was doing Dungeons and Dragons and you saw in his face the pride in the stuff he was saying that was so stupid like he's like he's like so you you walk up to a bar and uh there's an elf there and uh he uh he looks like like not happy but like you know something's going on and like he's just like and like he's saying you you would be great at dungeons and dragons dude he's saying that to the girl who he like just married and, and she's like oh like Okay, and he the the mm-hmm. pride mm-hmm. in what he's saying. He's thinking like, man, I'm the next like J.K. Rowling or like yeah. some like he thinks that he's just murdering this game, and everyone is kind of sitting around like, uh, it's very. I strange. have so I I totally get it. I but I have such an immense respect now post G four because I had to play it and I had to play it on television, so I had to. I had to learn it quick. And Is it a board game? It's it's called a a tabletop RPG. So it's like <laughs> there's a there's not really a, a cool board. cool way to start. It's a cool name. It's it's like exactly what you would think, but it it is if you can sort of get past the this is like what people do like to get beat up on, you know, I mean this is a, one of the nerdiest things you can do. It's essentially like improvised uh game like it's a game that you kind of improvise and role play in and that's it's like not game of thrones of if game of thrones was made by people with like no talent i don't you know, know game of well there's so so what well, I'm, I'm sure there's like say, great yes yeah, so our like dungeon master, level so our, our dungeon master for the show is a guy by the name of d uh b dave walters and he's honestly b. one of the most <laughs> b dave one of the most talented guys i have ever seen work because he had to like keep the show together know what was going on and improvise as like 10 different characters and like it's it's a it's a it's a skill and the guys that do it really are well are acting? very good you you're acting you're you're improvising you're acting There's dice you're playing it's it you have to know kind of like what sort of like spells and shit would you're i doing. love this Look, I think if you got Bo into it, I think Bo could be like right for this sort of thing. If you don't sell it to him as like a dorky thing, I think uh, I think he's getting close. You remember, you know, the Stranger Things show. I suggest, you know, Stranger Things. Yeah. Did he watch that or no? Is it too old? No, it's too. I I, he he's told he's asked me. He's like, one of my friends was able to watch Stranger Things. And I was like, really? I feel like it's a little scary for you. Yeah. In Texas, that's wild. So d and is kind of having a resurgence because of Stranger Things because it's like part of the show. These is guys like those just kids did playing. like a documentary on it. There's even a movie right? coming out with Chris Pine. and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a, it's a good time. I think when he gets maybe a little bit older, you show him Stranger Things, and if he even shows in like a, hey, what's Dungeons and Dragons? You should. Why do they play that in Stranger Things? They play things? that, and like it kind of is it part of the show? Yeah, it's not like so here, it's it's a it's a it's a part of the show that like themes it, but it's not like a, a you know what's a going Dungeons and Dragons thing. It's yeah, not yeah. a Dungeons and Dragons show, right? The the thing I think it's like I look at. I look at it almost the way I look at like karaoke where people are like, Hey, like we go and do karaoke and we just have fun. Like have a good time. It's like, Oh cool. Like if people are like, yeah, we play Dungeons and Dragons and we like it. But then if people are like, no, we go do karaoke, but we're like, you know, if we didn't have real jobs, like we could be professional. And then you go see them and you're like, Oh, you're really bad. And this is awkward and uncomfortable. Yeah. You know? So it's like, if people are like, Oh, we play Dungeons and Dragons. It's silly. Like we do it once a month at my friend's house. And it's like, yeah, who cares? Like whatever. But if people are like, no, we're like the next great minds of story creating and then you watch them and you're like these people are right it's you know it's 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 like imagine watching somebody who thinks they're good do karaoke this is 10 times more awkward like it's so awkward because everyone around them like 
either there, there's only two sides of the fence. You're either going, God, this is awkward, or you're like captivated going like this guy's the next big thing. Mm. <laughs> and so there's just such a like the dynamic in the room is wild. It's crazy. Yeah, I I think uh, just like a lot of things, it can people can take it too far. But um, I was totally on that side of the fence when it came to D and D, and then I played it, and when I started to kind of understand it and like let go of it, I I did have some fun doing it. Um, and there's got to be some some panties out there that are also D and D heads. I'm sure big big D and D heads die. out there. Um, all right, well, um. Is that an hour? I think that's an hour. Um, oh, my laptop's about to die. Well, good. We got to do these ads. But uh, guys, I know some kind of sad news there today. But Let me yeah. see that ad. It'll be fine. You guys are, trust me, when you uh, see kind of what uh, what's in store in the future, you guys will be stoked and everyone's going to be happy. And uh, But uh, yeah, it's been- I would really like to prepare a good goodbye well, we'll sure. have to do something. Maybe people can call. Maybe we'll do a best of clip. Uh, show, like uh, have our uh, everyone's voted on favorite moments, and we yeah. can watch those. Yeah, maybe let's do that right now. We so can even do can... A, a live version of it if we wanted to. Like we could set. Yeah, a... tell us your favorite thing moments. Should go on Reddit. Tell it. Yeah. Reddit. Tell us. Go or on Reddit. Instagram. Tell us your favorite moments, and we'll rewatch them and talk about them. Yeah, uh, r slash pajama pants podcast on Reddit. That's a great place. Maybe one of our, um, you know, mods there or just active users can create a thread. And then, uh, you know, typically when we've done these in the past, we get a couple, three answers, and which is good. But if you guys uh, want to like really get behind it, and we can do this, and we can, we can make it a live sort of event. We can come in and watch the best moments. Um, we can maybe even and this do it is on something Twitch. too. Like, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, even when this is done, like at the end of the year or whatever, we're still going to have the YouTube channel, whatever that like, you know, maybe three, four times a year we'll hop on and do something. And if we ever all live in the same city again, maybe it comes back. Like, again, I I will not ever shut it, shut it down completely. We'll always kind of keep the door cracked there. Yeah. Uh, Basically, we can't afford Gabby anymore. She kind of put us underwater. Yeah, and I like suggested her to many people and she's gotten big time. They've all hired she, her. Oh, you know what? She actually texted me last week and you know what she said? We spoke about her on this podcast and we said that she didn't get an iPhone. I said, you said she got an iPhone. I said she didn't get an iPhone. She just uses her email on the messenger and she said, guys, guess what? You were right, but last week she made the jump. She got an iPhone. And I texted well, her, I said, she's big time I now. said, welcome to America. Yeah. And she was thrilled. Congratulations, Gabby. Um, All right, guys, that's it for us. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Appreciate you. Follow us on uh, Instagram and Twitter, and we have a TikTok. And like we said, we're on Reddit. Jamie and I have all those things. Rob is off the grid. Do not try and contact him. If you have a question for the pod, ask pajamapants at gmail.com. That's the place. I almost got on off the grid. I almost downloaded Twitter and was going to get like a make a real Twitter for me. And then I was like, I can't do this. I, the the idea lasted like thirty minutes. I say I say you know like this pod keep that door open. You know. Oh well, yeah, you never know. It's always social media. It is. There, it you, know? you can use it in ways that you're not uh, like engaging with it like a psychopath, but it's good for your business sort of stuff. So, okay, yeah. thanks guys. We'll see you in the next one. 